if you have a website, like we have a few at Rackspace and we have 200,000 customers who built websites on Rackspace, you need to analyze what your traffic is doing, what, what is going on on your website. But the world has changed. It's not just about visiting your website anymore. Now you've got Foursquare and Facebook and Twitter and all sorts of other places that that traffic's coming from that's affecting the kinds of uh, context that your customers are coming to your website for. So you need a better web analytics tool than just Google Analytics. And that's what we're going to see today. It's called Spinnaker. Who are you? Hey, uh, so I'm Adam Bonifield. I'm co-founder of Spinnaker. Um, so I've been working in digital strategy and engagement and since, uh, I don't know, I was 17 years old. And um, we started in politics raising money for campaigns. This was in 2006, right around the, the birth of you know, uh, online fundraising. And, um, and, and we, we sort of survived this inflection point where we raised tons and tons of money when everyone else thought that there wasn't any money online. And, um, and, and sort of used a lot of those ideas and sort of were inspired by uh, that success to, you know, to, to look into other ways of, of, of sort of scaling, you know, uh, online analysis and optimization. Yeah. So uh, tell me about how you see the web and analytics. And well, first of all, who is this? Who is Spinnaker for? Yeah. So Spinnaker, Spinnaker is really for everybody. Um, I think that the people who will get most out of it are the people who aren't served by where analytics is today. So the way we see analytics is we see it as being built, all analytics, but we're, we're working in web analytics for people who are experts in data science. People who have time and want to spend time sitting in front of uh, an application, watching and analyzing um, a, you know, giant charts and graphs and trying to figure out what they mean. And that's this, this tiny percentage of the world. And yet, the amount and power of big data is so valuable that we see this, this growing massively. Yeah. And we think instead of competing to add complexity and new tools and build more powerful, you know, more powerful sort of uh, visualizations for data scientists, you need to build something for people who you know, aren't expert in these yeah, things. Like my brother runs a bar, right? And he might have a website and a Foursquare account and a Facebook account and a Twitter account yeah. and a Yelp account. And what does he do, right? Yeah, yeah. People who work at a, a, you know Zappos, there's you know a dozen people who just deal with how to how the web works and how to onboard customers and all that stuff. So they're very advanced compared to the uh, average business out there. Yeah, so they have the time to just like sit in front of their platform and then you know hire teams, you know sort of professional consultants or teams to just sort of tell them what's going on. And then over the course of really, really, you know, really long time to make all these changes to their website. And um, and our thesis is that's just the wrong way of doing business. That you know, not just for you know small companies, but big companies, but especially for small companies like your brother, um, he he's never going to get value out of that. And yet he could. I mean, he could triple his business if he knew how to channel all that traffic into getting people at his bar. Yeah. So uh, the world has changed. I, when I built websites in '94, there was no Twitter, there was no <laughs> YouTube, there was yeah. no Facebook, no Instagram, no, no none of these places where we talk about business all day long. I mean, I got million dollar deals on Facebook. Uh, that never happened in '94, right. right? Yeah. And so now I need to analyze. I think. Uh, I, let me put a thesis out here that I need yeah. to analyze where, who's talking about me, where they're coming to me, why are they coming to me. Wh and then I need to customize messages based on, you know, if they're coming off of a TechCrunch yeah. article or a, you know, a New York Times article or something, it's going to be a different customer that comes to, to my site than if they're just talking about web, web hosting on Facebook. Right? Exactly. I, I think we see things the same way. And so basically the way, the way you know, I, I sort of think about it is that there's, the Internet's totally changed. It used to be the case that, you know, like the way the World Wide Web was architected, it used to be like little static documents and you just sort of link them together. And that's not at all how people experience the web. It's like you say, it's all contextual. The experience they're having is incredibly fluid and they're moving from Twitter to Google to you know, a website. And then in that moment, they've got this little ephemeral feeling like I'm looking for this kind of experience. I'm, you know, I'm interested in this bar because like I just read an article that said they had a 
you know, a really cool like slider appetizer. Or I read this other article and they said these, the bartender's an asshole. Let me go there and see like you know see what they um, you know see what they say about that. Yeah. And so these people are obviously totally different. And so you need to capture that context. And if you could figure out what what people's intentions are when they come to your website in that tiny little moment and send them to the exact thing they want, you can make it vastly more likely that they'll actually buy something from you or visit your, you know, visit your bar or, yep. you know, or sign up for your newsletter or whatever. That, plus, that also leads to a trend that I think we're gonna see over the next 10 years. Right now, businesses, even high-end businesses like the Ritz, when you come into them, they have no clue who you are. Yeah. Like I, on Foursquare, I've checked in at the Ritz at, in Half Moon Bay 210 times, <laughs> right. right? But I walk in the front door, they have no clue. And yeah. certainly when I go to another Ritz, they have even less of a clue. Cause at, at least at my local Ritz, they know a little bit about, they see me, right? And that I buy yeah. the same whiskey every time. And, and they, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. they know a little bit about me and what I do, and then I'm a tech journalist and stuff like and, that. And yet the, the data is out there to figure that kind of stuff out. Absolutely. And, and the problem is that human beings aren't just the right like entities to be able to extract that information. It's, it's really, really tough. And you, know, you could try to get around it by employing these massive teams to sort of figure this stuff out. But at the end of the day, that information should just be automatically surfaced. And if it's super relevant, like you know, if you have tons of people coming, you know, ordering the same drink at the Ritz and you don't even know that, that's, that's a problem. Well, they're even, they're trying, right? Because they, now they have a social media team somewhere in the world that every time you say the word Ritz on right. Twitter, they respond to you. It's brilliant, right? At the first level, yeah, but yeah. then you tweet back, and they either they don't tweet back to you, they don't have a conversation. It's just a, a script or an algorithm yeah, or yeah, some yeah. human in India somewhere writing back. Oh yeah, you know, thanks for joining for coming to the Ritz. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. You started the conversation, but you don't put any custom content. You don't give me. You don't enhance my experience. And then they don't even know who the fuck I am. <laughs> and so and so it's like and they that and if they do respond a couple times, like they did to some of my friends yesterday. Yeah very quickly do you realize these people don't have a freaking clue about anything in the world, right? <laughs> and so I'm looking for tools like yours that help teams like that get a better clue about what's going on, who people are, and, and how to customize messages to them. Yeah, sure. So Rackspace, you come to Rackspace, we have a chat guy or a girl, yeah. and they're there 24 hours a day. Yeah. I'd like to know more about why you came Right? Where yeah, did you sure. come from? What link did you click on? And see that in real time so I could better serve you. Right? Yeah, and so, and chat is one of those great innovations. Like people are bringing chat to the site. And that is one way, genuinely, that the average website is transforming from a static document into this living organism. And I think what we see ourselves is like the next generation of, of that kind of technology where it's not just this tiny little window in the corner of the page. Literally, the website can just change depending on who the person is. And instead of just asking some person on Twitter to like, you know, just, just like spam chat tons and tons of people, which doesn't work, you need an intelligent system yeah. that targets the important stuff going on and like lets you know the, the three or four things that you just need to respond to and you need to target these kinds of things. So if I put uh, Spinnaker into Rackspace and integrate it, what, what would it do for Rackspace? What, what, what would our teams be able to see about our customers or see or do in real time that we can't do today? Yeah, so let me show you, can I just show sure, you? Um, this is This is a, an example of a feed from one of our, um, from one of our clients, music.com. So um, I, obviously this looks nothing like any analytics feed you've ever seen before. Usually it's just like it's littered with tons of different charts and, and graphs and, and this is more of like a news feed, a timeline. Right. And it's letting you know just like a few really important things going on. So for music.com, let's see, it has a traffic spike from Google.com, and you can see it's it's sort of starting to taper off. Right. You can so see. So there might have been a big music concert. You know, if there's Coachella and somebody says, "Hey, go check out this website," all of a sudden, where are these people coming from? Right. Right. Because exactly. Going to Google looking up this new name. Exactly. And so these are people probably who are just popping up who probably have never been to your site before. You can figure yep. that out. You could say, "Okay, you have a new search term. People are searching for music." And then you know you can see there's tons of different um, sort of related terms to that. But you're saying, okay, you've got this massive important search term, music driving traffic, makes sense. You should really be targeting based on that. Yep. And um, you know we could say something about visitor loyalty. Say, okay, you have an increase in returning visitors. So this is sort of along the lines of what you're saying that yeah. you know if the Ritz has tons of returning visitors 
and they're coming back again and again, they have a different relationship with the Ritz than somebody who just walks in off the street. You know, yeah. they probably have a favorite drink. Maybe they're interested in, you know, maybe they're business travelers or whatever, and so they're interested in, well, right. what do you do at the Ritz? Well, you sort of just drink at there. At Rackspace, if you're a Rackspace customer, why do I send you to my sales pages? You're already a customer. So exactly, right. You're probably looking for facts or support or Exactly. You so know, if you yes. like So if you know that actually, you know, you thought that Rackspace is all about selling to customers, but a ton of people are coming and returning to Rackspace again and again, and they're looking for those other things. They're looking for support. Um, and so, you know, and then you see like, okay, well then there's these other sort of custom messaging or custom sort of engines that we have that just look for important platform traffic and things like that. So we can see Facebook, stumble up on Pinterest are all massive drivers. So this wouldn't be the case for maybe Rackspace, maybe it would, but for, you know, a content site like music.com, they get tons of traffic from social. They probably know they get tons of traffic from Facebook, but they wouldn't even think to look to see what StumbleUpon and Pinterest is doing. Yeah. So we can sort of, you know, we're pulling all the data from the this site. Is this is important because we have a, a dozen people who are on our social media marketing team, right? Yeah. And now we can um, manage that team and say, okay, are we spending enough time on Pinterest? We're getting a lot of traffic there. We don't have a, a page there. Yeah. You, you, we better figure that out, you know, and invest some time there. Yeah, and what's really interesting is when people start to use Spinnaker, one of the first things they, they love is this idea of they just discover these, these crazy sources of traffic they never knew about. So they'll yeah. say like, okay, Quora actually is this massive driver to our site. And so what we can say is, you know, normally that wouldn't be that relevant to them. They'd be like, okay, well, it's not important enough that we want to change our website. We could say, you know, at the click of a button, well, anybody who's coming from Quora, just ask them to upvote the answer they just read. And that kind of context is so powerful. Like if you know mm -hmm. that somebody just read, you know, an, an answer that you submitted to Quora and arrived on your page to find the answer they were looking for, it's so important to say to that guy, yeah, please upvote our answer. That's, yeah. that's how we get more traffic from Quora. And yet, and it the also way websites shows, are built, don't do that. It also shows when I come to, like, let's say, Rackspace, yeah. oh, this site is change it and change it and changing based on where I'm coming from it give, it makes me feel a little bit better maybe a little freaked out too but most people like that kind of thing that hey you know where I came from you know what I just saw and now you're customizing the content based on that context yeah. and that's and that's what makes websites unique I mean you're going there to to have an experience you want them to market you what you're looking for right it's yeah. not like you're walking down the street and people are harassing you with ads you're literally there you know, say you're looking for a job, you're there trying to apply for a job. And so if yeah. the owner of the website can say, okay, you're getting tons of traffic from job seekers, which is, you know, one of, one of the, our supported sort of alerts, um, then it's so important to be able to say that to the person because then you can say to the, the visitor, okay, here's how you apply for a job. Not only that, but if you're searching, let's say you're Toyota, if your customer is searching for Toyota trucks, why are you taking him to the Prius page? Right. And that's stupid. Yeah. That's a waste of, uh, it's a potential lost conversion, right? Yeah. Take him right to the truck page. Right? Yeah. Can you do that stuff with Spinnaker? Absolutely. That's, okay. you know, so, and that would be something that we would automate for you. So we would just tell you, okay, people are searching for Priuses. You know, you would, you know, let's say instead of searching for music, they were searching for Priuses. You'd say, okay, you know, respond to this, say, um, okay, you know, um, our new, Trucks are zero down. <laughs> yeah. Zero percent. I have no idea what they say. Zero percent savings. Whatever. And um, that instantly goes out on your website, and the the content is customized based on that. Exactly. So you can real time click. change your content in reaction to the context of your customers. Exactly. Story. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. It, it's it's a completely different way of thinking about optimization because the way you, most people think about optimization and targeting, they think of it long term. They think, I need to figure out who are the, the currents at the bottom of the ocean, the people who, you know, are coming back, you know, you know weeks and months later, because that's the only time frame that optimization works. All right, you sold me. Okay. So right. we don't need to talk about the product. If people <laughs> want to know more about the product, they can go Spinnaker. dig in. Yeah. How, do I, how do I get this? What do I have to do to my website to get this onto Rackspace.com or Toyota.com or whatnot? Super simple. Just go to Spinnaker.com, sign up. Um, we give you a, a tiny little code snippet, or if you use something like WordPress, we integrate with all these platforms. But it's literally just drop the code on your site, and we take over from there. And how do you charge? You know, it's, it, a site like Rackspace, we have five thousand employees, big public company. Is is it charged by C? I, how yeah. You so you're so we charge you based on your traffic. So if you have tons and tons of traffic, you know, you'll be paying hundreds of dollars a month for us. 
But you know, we also wanted to but build hundreds of dollars, not hundreds of thousands. Exactly, of exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. You could afford so it. So I probably could put it. it on a credit card. Uh, you could put it on your credit card. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> on Rackspace's credit card, maybe. Yeah. And um, and so that's and so that's you know, for, no, for big companies, it makes sense, right? And um, but we also wanted to build a product that would really open up optimization and analytics. So now my brother's bar that has, you know, I, I don't know, a few thousand visits a month, how much yeah. would he pay? So he could start using us for free and just start getting value from us instantly. So if you just think to yourself like, I just want to see what this is about. You can start using us for free. And then when you start taking action and, and you know and start getting value from the product, then we'll start charging you. But it's gonna be something that you can afford. It's not gonna be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, right? Like that you that big companies would pay. It takes that power and value and automates it all so we can charge you something much less. How, so let's, uh, so okay, I decided to buy, how does this change my team and what kinds of skills do I need to, what, or mindset do I have to change now that I have this locked in? Great mind? question. So our thesis is, the big problem with how this works is that we're forcing people, we're forcing the marketing team of companies currently, today's products, force them to think like scientists. There's this whole movement, you know, the sort of growth hacker movement to sort of force everyone into this mold of thinking incredibly analytically about, about, you know, about their traffic on their site. And that works for some people, but most people who are you know, doing professional marketing, they're inspirational, they're creative. We want to let them focus on that stuff and we want to automate all of the analysis for them so they can just do the stuff that they're paid to do, which is like think about how to connect with a customer. Yeah. So we don't want to have to actually ask them to set up experiments to get them to the point where they could start thinking about the creative stuff that they're gonna to say to the, the targets of those experiments. We just want them to think about that creative stuff. So it's a different mindset, and we think it's a mindset that's gonna open up the So let's talk about space. Oakley. They make sunglasses and, and other things, wearables, yeah. you know, wearable clothes, clothes and stuff like that. They might see a weird trend all of a sudden. Why are these uh, XYZ uh, brand glasses all of a sudden selling? Yeah. Well, you might need to go out to Twitter or Facebook and see, oh, all the kids on the beach are wearing those and saying those are the cool glasses right now. Yeah. And in the old world, it would take a lot of work to figure that out. In, in this world, you can figure that out in real time and maybe switch your homepage and say the hottest trend on the beach right now is these new Wayfarer glasses. Or exactly. And the, and the real big change that I think makes it so important that you do this stuff in real time is that... In the past, there just wasn't as much data to really look at. So you wouldn't have like this Twitter stream of photos that you could examine or just tons of visitor traffic that you could identify as coming from certain places. That information wasn't out there, it wasn't collected. But if you start, you know, and obviously we've increased the amount of information available to us like by millions of orders of magnitude. And so if you have all this information out there, it's inevitable that you'll miss stuff if you're just trying to sort of, you know, hire a team of people to figure it all out themselves. Yeah. And so it's so much more important to automate all this analysis, to make it so that a machine which can run this process in real time and deliver you the insights instantly as they happen can actually do that as opposed to, you know, people, you know, staff. So, the, can you do A-B testing and see, okay, if I change my homepage to, to these new Wayfarer glasses, do, do my conversions go up? Yeah, sure, so we just set up, so we just, created this music campaign. Um, and so we can really easily um, track the progress of it. So it's, it's already live on the site, so I should probably delete this because this is actually live data. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so I'll delete yeah, this in a second. <laughs> um, but so right now, you know, so we set, set this up, there's been zero, zero clicks so far, 0% lift, we just set this up. This, this graph will update in real time. So as we start getting clicks, you'll start seeing a little trend line that will follow, you know, follow the progress of things and measure exactly how effective it is. So it'll tell you how much lift you're getting versus the baseline of, um, you know, of your regular site. I'm gonna delete this so that we don't. Can you set up notifications to let, you know, on a Sunday night, hey, there's something happening. All of a sudden you got mentioned on the uh, Tony Awards last night. And, and XYZ famous stars wearing your sunglasses and that's why the hits are going up. Do you, do you have that kind of... Yes, kind of so and that's, and that's the cool thing about what we do is that since we're able to event all this stuff, so instead of thinking about graphs and charts and asking you to analyze them for trends, we turn everything into an event, a piece of news, like a news story headline. And so we can make it so that you just get notified of them when it's important. And so just to that's sort of really simulate what that's like. So I'll just spike a visitor um, event. Um, so that's something to set up. And all of a sudden I just get a notification on my phone. So if I'm walking around, you know, not, you know, if I'm at 
WWDC or something, I'd say, oh, wow, this is important. I just got a traffic spike and respond to it immediately. Or if I'm on my browser, see this little... And within a few minutes, you can change your homepage, which will increase your conversions and exactly. show that you're clued in on what's going on in the world right now. Exactly. And Tim Cook announced, he talks about your product. You want to see that in real time. You it's don't so want important. To, Actually, you don't want to wait until next week when all the visitors come to your website and say, oh, this company's clueless. Yeah, it's funny. We actually had a, um, a, a random... Uh, when we were giving, we were giving our... Uh, we were in 500 startups and we were sort of in demo day. And we were giving, uh, right about to get up and give our pitch for demo day. And um, we, we, Spinnaker alerted us and said, okay, well, you know, you've got this tons of traffic from France. It's like, France? What was that from? And we sort of clicked into it and saw that actually French TV had been covering us. And so instantly we were like, okay, well, what's French for? Welcome to Spinnaker. So we sort of typed that in. And that massively increased the likelihood people converted. Um, so it was like 300% lift. That giant traffic spike that was just hitting us because there's this TV article about our TV, you know, TV news story about us, and um, it massively increased the likelihood they'd sign up because they saw language, you know, their own native language there, and yeah. understood what was going on, and thought to themselves, okay, these guys probably want to support me, and so that's the kind of stuff that actually happens all the time. Like the vast majority of traffic fits into that mold of sort of organic traffic. Yeah. And it's so important to respond to them, and yet nobody's really built a system that automates all of it fast enough that you can actually do that. Wow, that's going to change marketing forever. Um, how, tell me about your custom, company, how, how many people are working on this, and how do you yeah. get funded and all that? Um, yeah, yeah, so we, um, we have about six people working on the, on the product right now. Um, we've just announced today um, that we raised about a million dollars from people like Andreessen Horowitz, 500 Startups, Point Nine Capital, Sand Hill Angels, cool. and a lot of other angel investors in the space, like the founders of Comscore. I can see why Andreessen would be all over this. One of his themes is know your customers better. Yeah. And that helps you. Yeah, and it's, and it's a controversial take on the future of, of optimization and analytics. So, you know, a lot of people are interested in it just because it's different, you know. Instead of running the direction that a lot of companies are running where things are becoming more complex, you know, and, and more difficult to use, and, and predicting that that's the future, we're predicting a much different future where things become simple, automated, and automatic. Very cool. Awesome. Where do I learn more about it? It's spinnaker.com. So S P I N N A K R.com. Yeah, uh, there's, it's A K R, right? So that's there's right. an E missing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so right. much for it's showing us. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get the Rackspace teams on this thing, but this really helps a lot of marketers all over the world. So Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for your time.